Hi everyone, um, good to see you all. Uh, Renewron, we are, we are a British uh, company, we are, we're a public company, so you have the disclaimer here. We are, um, we have 65 people in the UK and the US. Uh, we work in cell therapy, uh, we have two programs in the clinic, um, and we also have an interesting exosome uh, research program. Now I know the focus on this meeting is on the first of these three platforms, so I'm going to focus on that, but just quickly what we have. So we have a human retinal progenitor cell, uh, which we are focusing on retinitis pigmentosa. First of all, it's a cryopreserved human retinal pro progenitor cell. Uh, that's partnered with Folsom Pharma in China, and other than that, it's unencumbered. Um, second program we have is in neurology, uh, so it's a neural stem cell where we treat patients who are left with disability following a stroke, um, and that's in a controlled study in the US in 110 patients, so that's ongoing. Um, and the last bit, which I mentioned, was um, uh, exosomes. Um, we're looking at them as a replacement for viral vectors in terms of delivery of gene um, therapy, um, and might have ophthalmology uses as well. So let's uh, dig into the HRPC program a bit more. Uh, it's a similar program to JSite, and Paul is in the room, so you know if I say something wrong, Paul, you can correct me. Um, it's a very similar programs that we do. The difference is that JSite is putting it into the vitreous while, while we are putting it in, uh, subretinally. The, um, um, these cells are differentiating into functional photoreceptors in preclinical models. Uh, they integrate. Um, they have uh, broad therapeutic potential, but as I said, we are focusing on RP first of all. Um, we worked very hard on the manufacturing process over many years. Um, as you know, CMC is the most important bit in cell and gene therapy. Um, and uh, after working with Skeppens, I Research Institute, and also UCL in London, uh, we have now a very uh, scalable and consistent uh, platform here. We can actually deliver hundreds of thousands of doses from one derivation. I don't need to teach anything about retinitis pigmentosa, um, but the, the point I want to make on this slide is that uh, this is not a great place for gene therapy. Uh, there are over 100 different genes that are causing RP, so that means you need to start a lot of gene therapy companies if you want to treat this disease. Um, our cells are gene independent. Um, the, if we create new photoreceptors, if that's what's going on, these are healthy new photoreceptors, um, and they will not have um, the gene defect. In preclinical models, uh, we've seen evidence that we have integration into the host retina in the rat model here on the one side, um, and we also see pres preservation in vision for over the optokinetic response. Uh, in the pig model here, we saw different differentiation into retinal cells. We saw um, integration of those. And also importantly, we didn't use any immunosuppression in those studies. We could prove that immunosuppression was not uh, necessary. Uh, we see good durability of the cells, so good cell survival in the animal studies. So that gives us hope that we will have good durability in human studies as well. And talking about human studies, uh, we've done a phase one study in 12 patients uh, that took our um, dose, the 1 million cells in that study, and also took us from a fresh um, cell product to a cryopreserved cell product. Uh, that cryopreserved product has nine month shelf life and can be used globally for ship and, and use. So we moved on to a phase 2A study, which is ongoing now. Um, we have so far treated 10 subjects in the phase 2A study, um, and I will share those data with you uh, in a second. Um, there are two sites uh, active in this study, and that Mass Ironier uh, with Dr. Commander, um, and also Praveen Dougal um, in Arizona. So this is a surgical procedure. You can see the cells being delivered here. Uh, thanks to Jason Commander for that video. I do think it's quite fun to see how they spread it across the macula there. Um, a quick um, comment on safety. We treated 22 subjects so far. Um, the dose escalation went well. 
Uh, we have no evidence of inflammation, which is one thing you look for, uh, looking for rejection or anything like Im immunology uh, issues, and we haven't seen that. Uh, there are no serious adverse events that are, re that are related to the drug product. We had two procedure-related events leading to vision loss, um, and I'll show you data with and without those two patients because that obviously skews the data a little bit. And just, I'm going to give you the data quite quickly because uh, Dr. Duga will present it in detail on Saturday, so you know you can see it and then you can forget it. Um, so this is an all comers. <laughs> So if you look at a treated eye in all comers, you have between five and 19 letter improvement, uh, um, depending on the time point in the study. And as I said, we're kind of halfway through a 12 month study. So, you know, this is an ongoing study. Um, if, you, if you remove the two patients that had uh, vision loss due to the procedure, uh, so these are then uh, patients with a successful surgery, uh, you can see um, the uh, um, treated eye uh, again, depending on the time point, between 12 and 29 letters improvement. Um, and if you want to look at the net between treated and untreated eye, you have 10 to 20 letters, uh, again, depending on the time point. So now you don't see it anymore. So uh, Dr. Duke will be presenting this data on Saturday morning, so uh, you know where to go. Uh, and you'll see more patient by patient data, et cetera. So I've just given you really the top line here. So obviously for us, uh, next steps here is to finish this study. Um, we're halfway in a 12-month study, so there will be more data coming. Um, we're in discussions with regulatory authorities and KOLs um, around um, uh, what the next steps are, what the next studies will look like, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, with that, um, I, I leave you reading the summary. Um, we are motivated by po very positive patient feedback uh, that drives us. And we're very excited about the future and we're hoping for a bright future for Renewal and a brighter future for our patients. Thank you very much. <laughs>